everybody and welcome back to Chivalry 2. Today we're going to be talking about the beta that they had or the preview of the new patch that is coming out which will be going for Steam, the Tenotian Invasion. Well, we get a new voice lines, we get some new looks to things, we get some new maps. I think we get four new maps in total. I think I only managed to play on three of them somehow, but that's no problem. What we got to play was enough to kind of make a judgement on if it's good or bad. And this is kind of my first impressions of what I think is really good and what I think wasn't as good in the patch. Now, a lot of the things I'm going to say here is from personal experience, of course. And I think one of my favorite maps in this entire new thing was the Breach of Baudwin, which you see in the background right now. And this map is a really cool map that goes in really epic stages, and I really like it. This may be a little bit of issue where I have between uh, stage two or three, where you go from the gates to the market. The spawn seems a little bit far away from the defender side. But that might just be me. We will see how this will progress when it comes out live. It might change. It might. It is a beta. It's not finished. For, you know, it's not put in stone what this is going to play exactly like. Now, so you might ask Turtle, what did you like the most about this? you know, update. And well, I can tell you that the one thing I really enjoyed the most was the team objective maps. The new team objective maps really added some flair, some epic battles and some really cool objectives. Like some objectives that really feel like, you know, team objective modes kind of makes you feel like the game has changed, even though it hasn't. You play the game with the same mechanics, but it still has some new kind of ways to play it. And what I realized, like on the, for example, on the map where you fight on the lighthouse, which I'm going to put in the background now, is that some, when you fight over the bridge, what I didn't realize at first is that you can go underneath the bridge. It has a whole system underneath it, so you can easily flank and get around the enemy team. That's something I wish I knew in the beginning of the map, so I could have used it a bit smarter. I will also say I probably did not perform really well at all during this beta. There was a lot of people that were in the beta are the Chivalry 2 players that are in Chivalry 2 more than I am, <laughs> so I got my ass handed to me pretty often, sadly. But, you know, I'll improve. I mean, fighting people that are better than you, you know, I'll, you'll improve eventually. But over time, I will say that Chivalry 2 had one thing in the new update that I didn't really like. And the one thing I didn't really like was the battle cry for the Tenotians. It's pretty fun in the first, like, 10 minutes of hearing it, but then after a while, it starts getting a bit samey. And what I mean about that, when you hear that enough, you start going crazy. But maybe that's part of the plan for Torn Banner, to make you go crazy. So when you see the Tenotians, you want to be like, oh my god, I'm going to get you. I'm going to slaughter you now. But let's talk about something else as well. They add a new siege equipment to this patch, the Bombard. Now, the Bombard, we read about it in the patch notes. So I'll leave a link to that video in the top right corner if you haven't seen it already. And... It's a pretty cool siege weapon. Sadly, it's only used for the wall demolishing sequence, but it could be used for something more as well, I would say. I feel like the Bombard could be placed maybe on the defensive side of the Tenotians when they're defending their own city. I think that would be cool to have a little bit of cannon fire going on so we get a little bit of variation from catapults and ballistas and having some cannons shooting at people. That would be pretty damn cool. Now, sadly, we didn't really get to look at any customization for the horses or the Tenotians, but I'm pretty sure there will be horse customization because when I did open up the customization area, the horse was standing in the back there kind of ominously looking at everybody. So I'm pretty sure that the horse customization will be a thing. So don't you worry. I'm pretty sure it will. Now, speaking of horses, the horse gameplay in this patch actually feels really good. Sadly, I didn't get to use a horse enough times to kind of get a good feel for it, but I did learn a little trick to kind of counter horses. I don't know if Tornbanners can fix this or change how this works, but if you're playing the Vanguard, you know your sprint attack where you sprint and you jump and you slice? Well, that attack is very useful against horses. If you're coming in from the side of a horse and the horse is... Well, you're close enough and you manage to land a sprint attack. Most of the time, it will stop the horse in its tracks and then you can kill the horse or the rider pretty easily. A lot of the times when I did this was basically I insta-killed the rider instead of the horse, which made it kind of nice. So it made you so you can steal a horse and get a horse for yourself and you can finally ride a horse to battlefields where you haven't been before. 
Now, generally, I saw a bit of varied comment, a little bit of varied comments from people in game. Some people in game really like the horses. Somebody found them annoying. But if you've played Mordhau and you have played Chivalry 2, I will say that horses in Chivalry 2 feel better than in Mordhau. In Chivalry 2, they feel a bit more integrated into your character, not just as like a, you know, you get plopped on top of and then you ride a horse. When you spawn on a horse, you get a lance, and the lance is damn powerful. And now there's also momentum-based bonus damage. There's a lot of things to go through here. And the lance, it works like three times, three successful hits, it will break and you'll pull your main weapon out. But if you are playing a, you know, a, a guy with a very big weapon, that might be very handy because having a very big sword, long wind up time, but you can still, when you do hit people, holy shit, you hit them hard. Like you hit them real hard. So when we have talked about horses here and the gameplay, now, I didn't get enough time on a horse, as I said, sadly, but uh, I do think that at some point we will be able to get more horse gameplay. Getting on a horse, uh, apparently they said that random people will be selected, and you could press K to join the horse charge, but I think they choose too many people at once. Because uh, when I was playing, I pressed K when I got the prompt, but I never spawned on a horse. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's full. Sorry. Sorry, son. It's full. You cannot play on the horse after all. You don't get it. You don't get it after all. But there are some places on the map where you can find horses spawned. So if you don't get the horse, you can try to, well, find one on the map. There aren't many horse spawns as far as I know of. Maybe only two. Uh, they want to try to keep the horses kind of balanced, which is kind of makes sense. Also, if you want to have like more in-depth detail of the horse combat, I'm going to leave a link in the description to Torn Banner's live stream where they discussed horses before the the public test one out. Unfortunately, Torn Banner, you need to have these tests at an earlier hour, at least for me. The, the test for me started at like 7.30 p.m., which isn't bad time. But when you think about it, and when it goes to 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, that's like 7 a.m. for me. I, I'm not going to be able to play all through the night. God damn. Other than that, there were some bugs in the game as well. Some horses sometimes get stuck on things that they shouldn't have been stuck on, but overall, I would say the look is really, really great. I'm really looking forward to it. The team objective maps were above my expectation. I kind of was thinking that they wouldn't be very fun or very, you know, different from what we already have, but they really are. They're pretty damn different, and it makes a lot of you get a lot of cool gameplay moments, and uh, I love how the team objective modes just funnel you into certain areas, and it becomes kind of like a dynamic storytelling while you're playing the game, which is really cool. And when this patch goes live is when it launches on Steam, and that's when I also think we'll see an increase of players and other people joining the game. Now, hopefully, if you're playing Chivalry 2 very often and you're pretty decent at combat, hey, please, take it easy on the Steam people when they join. They're going to be fresh, you know, small, innocent Chivalry 2 players. we got to leave them alone a little bit. And then we slaughter them. I mean, I'm probably like an average Chivalry 2 player, I'd say. I'm not anything special. Definitely not amazing. But, um, yeah. Tell me in the comments, if you did play the test, what did you think? And if you haven't already, I put a gameplay video out of the whole round of the Breach of Baudwin, where it goes all the way to the end. And if you haven't seen that, in the top right corner, I'll leave a link to that as well. Tell me what you think about the patch. If you were not able to play it, what did you think of what you've seen? What are the things you would want changed? And what are your worries? I'm curious, but until next time, hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Until next time, hopefully I'll see you around. Leave a like if you haven't already. Subscribe with those notifications turned on. And thank you all very, very much. We have hit 3,000 subscribers. I'll figure out a way how we can celebrate this. Hopefully, when Chivalry 2 launches on Steam, maybe I can get some Chivalry 2 codes. Um, I'll see if I can get some console codes. Worst case, I will only be able to get PC codes. But we'll figure something out. If you enjoyed, I'll see you around, and I'll see you soon. I'm the Turtle, and until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I would probably rate this update like a solid 8 out of 10. We always gotta read, we always gotta leave some spots for improvements. There were some bugginess, but you know, 
otherwise, I felt great. And some of the voice lines were a bit annoying. And the announcer sometimes sounded like a smurf. But overall, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm.